So when we last met, uh, the top 10 worst duels of all time list had left me in a pretty uh, bad state. I won't go into too much detail, just know my local liquor store won't let me back in at this point. But, but, today we are here for a much happier discussion. We are here to talk about the top 10 best duels of all time, which is much easier said than done. Going through the list, there are so many great, fucking awesome duels throughout the franchise and boiling literally almost 20 years of action down to 10 spots is very fucking hard. So before any of you get on my case, if some major iconic popular duels like Yami vs. Yugi or Yugi vs. Jaden or Yusei vs. Jack, before any of you say that, why aren't those here? Just know, they're awesome. They're great. This was fucking hard. Hard, and I try to pick duels that I both love and also maybe don't get the recognition they deserve. Remember, this isn't a top 10 list from the various series. These are from all of them. That's a lot. So let's just stop talking about the process going into making that list and just get right on to that list. First and foremost, I think I should put this right up here on Front Street. The first few things on this list have absolutely no intelligent reasoning for why they're here other than, holy shit, I fucking love this. And first up, holy shit, I fucking love Jaden's first duel with darkness. Holy God, this is great. I remember back in the day being completely underwhelmed with GX and then this duel fucking happens. We get some big plot reveals at the beginning and then this duel happens happens and Jaden is sent to a fucking volcano and Cyrus and Chumley are gonna fall into the lava and Alexis is there because reasons and the duel goes and it's just fucking insanity like Every turn, Jane's got to bust out a fusion, and uh, Darkness is just bringing out all these crazy different dragons and red eyes attacks. And the thing that makes this very important to remember is that up until this point, Jane's fusion plays had been treated as okay, this is how he wins. This is what he does when he's ready to go for game. This is how you know he worked through the strategy and he's ready to win. Not this time. This time around, Fusions mean, oh my god, this is everything he can do just to keep up. It's an intense duel, it's a new level for just the whole GX as a whole, and just like the whole way it's done is just badass from beginning to end, and that big ending where it's like, behold, multi-attacking guy, it's awesome and I love it. Now. I acknowledge the best duel of GX is probably Jaden versus Ubel for the level of emotion it has. Having said that, holy shit do I love Jaden versus Professor Viper. This duel is like everything that made the last one awesome, like cranked up to 11 because at any point the Venom monsters could just make Jaden's monsters like zero attack and he could die. This duel has this just level of intensity and action packedness that I'm looking for from something trying to sell me a children's card game. Like every turn, Jaden just has to bust out newer, even crazier fusions than in the last duel and the the way that Viper plays the duel, you sort of just feel like he's just this unstoppable, immovable tank who's just coming for Jaden every second. Viper is one of the most just physically imposing Yu-Gi-Oh antagonists we've ever had, but when you combine that with the fact that his backstory is actually really interesting and has this very strong sense of drama, you actually feel sorry for the guy. It's like, yeah, he's doing awful things to the students, but when you learn why he's doing it and the way the show represents it, you're kind of almost wanting to take his side. It's really well done, it's really well written, and really well executed, and it informs the rest of the season, because what is the rest of this season about? It's about how far will you go to erase the sadness in your heart, your tragedies, your regrets. How far will you go to do that is the point of GX Season 3, and this is really where it starts, and it just starts with just this intense level of, oh my god, more snakes, more snakes, more snakes! Oh, and of course, that final turn, Magma Neos, triple contact, built up, made to seem badass. Okay, Magma Neos is like the ugliest looking triple contact. I'm personally a Chaos Neos fan myself, just for the design. But oh my god, the way it sits into like Snake Booby Lady is just fucking awesome and I love it. Poor Dr. Faker. 
I mean, how was he possibly supposed to be cool or interesting when his duel comes after the amazingness that is Yuma versus Tron? This duel is awesome. It exists for one purpose and one purpose only, to have a bunch of numbers just fight each other. And that is cool. Like, literally, the minute this duel starts, I just started laughing, like, oh my god, this is just an excuse to get a lot of numbers on screen, and it works! I love just watching more numbers come out. If you couldn't take the hint, I clearly like just crazy extra deck summoning based duels, and this is one of the all-time awesome ones. You really find Tron to be a fascinating villain. First up, his design is so strange and interesting to look at. The way he's performed in both sub and dub is excellent. And just the way, like, you learn the backstory and the way he manipulates Ryoga, Kaito, his own children, and, like, he just stays this fun, scary evilness. You just want Yuma to just, like, beat the shit out of him, and that is what you get here. It is just this amazingly badass duel, and you it's just freaking awesome like it's not enough to bust out numbers but like what does yuma need to win not one zeo weapon not two zeo weapons he needs three and the main one is this giant zoid looking motherfucker that combines with utopia and just slams right into into tron and it's just plain badass Number seven is a duel that no one really talks about that much, and it's a crying shame, because this one just always stuck with me after I watched it the first time, and that is Yugi's first duel versus Raphael. I know, I know, it's a weird one, but I think that's kind of why I like it. From the minute this duel starts, it has this very off feeling to it, like something's not right, something's fundamentally different going on here from the usual Yu-Gi-Oh! fanfare. And one thing you key on to very quickly is that Raphael, above all else, is not really doing this just to win. He's kind of using this duel to try and prove his ideology. Raphael is a really interesting character because of the way he sort of has his beliefs about how humanity is just so corrupt by nature and all these things. And he's kind of using Yami as an example for this. The whole duel, he's toying with him and pushing him and pressuring him to give up his morals, his belief, give into the darkness of the Ori Kalkos. And the way the whole duel is structured kind of makes you really start to question things too. It's a duel and a whole arc that really brings up questions about what is humanity and like are we just an inherently flawed species and i think that's really interesting to see get brought up and when you see that yami does ultimately give in to it he does give in to anger and taking the easy way out and you see the effects it has especially because up until this point we hadn't really seen eye of tamias really do that much so we thought this was the time to see him do some serious shit and it looked like it was going that way but just like no 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 everybody think Things will go in a much more different direction than you expect. And then when Yami loses and he loses Yuki and the way it informs the rest of the arc is genuinely fascinating. And it's all thanks to this very intense, very dark duel that really sticks with you after a while, along with just the whole Doma arc in general. All right, so up next, we have one of the all-time great shonen hero versus shonen villain confrontations, the match of the millennium itself, Yugi versus Pegasus. This duel has just been something that has followed me my entire life. I love it to this day, and it's just fucking awesome. After 40 odd episodes of build up, it does not disappoint. Pegasus has been built up as this mad genius. Nothing can stop him. Nothing can get him in his way. Our only hope is our spiky haired hero and he is behind the whole time or at least most of the time. We'll get into that. And I love it. The whole duel is just structured around this idea of Yugi trying to get a little bit further, get a little bit ahead. How do I deal with the tunes? How do I deal with 
uh, the Millennium Eye, how do I deal with Relinquished? It's just this series of just like one problem after another, and by the time you get to the end of it and Magician of Black Chaos just destroys Thousand Eyes Restrict, you're just like, I feel just as dead as little Yuki right now. Like, it is a awesome duel from start to finish. Pegasus has some of his best lines, his best manipulations, and his controlling. I like that this is a duel where both Yugi and Yami contribute. You really get that first hint of just how strong each of them is individually, as well as how well they work together. Uh, so many iconic monsters and just turns in the franchise happen during this match. It's like five or six episodes long. You don't fucking feel it. It's just awesome. I loved it as a little kid. I love it to this day. So while I hated Yuya's final duel with Reiji, I love their second duel. It's fantastic. Let's talk about it, shall we? So the big thing about this duel is that the setup for it is very very well handled. Yuya has just lost his best friend slash girl he wants to get in the pants of. Um, he has also found out there is a much bigger, darker world around him and a much darker, stranger thing going on inside of himself. And who's the person currently in his way? Who's the guy who seems to know everything, have all the advantages, and is clearly taking advantage of everyone around him? It's Reiji, and Yuya's gonna show him a thing or two. Except he doesn't. He loses. And that's just what makes it so great. This whole duel, you just feel the power level between these two. Reiji is this intelligent, cold, calculating, just sociopath who just plays this awesome deck. And Yuya is just this angry, scared kid just playing his hodgepodge of stuff, just trying so hard to just get a little advantage to just do something about this jerk in front of him. And it's just great. It's compelling. It's well written. It's well acted. We see the DDDs used to great effect. We see Ragnarok, who is still used in the deck to this day. It's a great duel. It's an awesome duel. And it just makes you want to give Yuya a hug so badly. Oh, God, that so sounds wrong considering how much of this guy's fan base is Yaoi based. So up next, we have Yusei's second duel with Akiza. Now, their first one could have been on here as well, but I feel like this one does a lot more interesting things and takes the characters in some more unique directions, so that's why it gets the point. Uh, first and foremost, you have Akiza's side of things. The Arcadia movement is gone. No one is telling her what to do. No one is trying to manipulate her at this point. And that kind of scares her. She doesn't know what to do next. She doesn't know what's going to happen, who she can trust, where to go. And these two episodes do a great job of showing her emotions and making everything be based around putting you in her mindset. I love the way the visuals of the way her face is done always reflect what's going on. I love the way uh, Black Rose, the rose petals, the destruction <laughs> around her is used to reflect what's going on. I love the way both voice actresses get really into the role, the music. It's a very fantastic way to use this character. On the other end, you also have Yusei, who might be at his best, because we just learned a lot about his past and his drama, so to see that he's trying to reach Akiza, it feels like it's coming from a very genuine place of just two kids with tough backstories just trying to understand each other. And I love the way the two dragons fighting each other is used. There's a lot of violent shots of the two going at each other, and it's great. It's just fucking great. I love the way Akiza's entire strategy is based around using Black Rose and cards that work with it, and I like that Yusei's strategy is based on countering this, and hey, his big play is to get to his mass back row removal. We can all relate to that. Coming up next is the most recent possible duel you could find on this list, and that is Yusaku versus I. This is how you truly cap off a series. On the one side of things, you have I, who is acted perfectly. He still sounds like the fun, goofy, lovable character, but we've seen this darkness consume him and take over him, and this final duel, you're having the layers peeled back, and as you learn what really brought him to this point, the things going on in his head, and how someone can truly become this hopeless, it's truly just a 
fantastic viewing experience. On the other side of things, though, Yusaku is also excellent. The way he is fighting to save his one real friend, the way he wants to get his partner back, the way he's just trying to protect that and just ultimately can't is really just well done. And on top of that, the duel itself is also excellent. I love seeing all the crazy Attic Nisters. I love seeing our first rank six. Uh, I love seeing Yusaku go all out with some Boralode fusions, with some dark fluids, all leading up to Axis Code Talker. It is a truly great duel and one that really shows you why Yu-Gi-Oh! can be such a fantastic franchise. Up next is another sad one. <laughs> Uh, but also a fantastic performance by one man playing two characters so far apart from each other, it's hard to believe. And that is Yuya versus Yuri. Kensho Ono is a god. This duel is genuinely just sad and tragic and dark, but there's no, like, sense of happiness or anything to it at all. You're in store for an experience that is equal parts awesome and equal parts miserable. The whole duel, Yuri is just taunting Yuya and just messing with his head and, like, just doing everything he can to just destroy this kid mentally. And you know what? It's fucking working. That's the crazy part. Like, yeah, Yuya wins in the end, but if you follow it, Yuri is getting what he wants. He wants Yuya to come back to form Zark. He likes hurting people. He likes the damage and destruction that's going to happen because Zark comes back. So that ultimately, he gets what he wants, even if he loses the life points in the process. And the whole time, from Yuya's perspective, like, you're just feeling everything this kid is going through. You're watching and listening as he just loses every last bit of his identity, his sense of self, his sanity, all accumulating in that ultimate moment where he's got to give up Smile World to not die, and the way it breaks him and just destroys him. It's this heartbreaking experience. It's glorifyingly acted. It has amazing visuals as the backgrounds become crazier and more like Lovecraftian as things get even darker and twisted around them. It's a fantastic duel. I love the way Yuto and Yugo are used. I love the way the Preta plants are used. I even love the bullshit performer pals and how they're used. It is a great duel by one of my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh characters and a eh, Yu-Gi-Oh character it almost makes you want to like. Just fantastic. And now we have reached number one. A lot of you probably already know what duel this is, but I don't care. We talk about what I want around here. Number one is Yuma versus Ryoga, and maybe in a way versus Astral as well. Think about it. This is what we're here to talk about. So, what puts this duel above all the rest, uh, above all potential other amazing franchise moments for me, is the whole setup of this duel. That's part one of it. So for starters, the fr uh, Zexel did a really good job of tricking you into thinking that was it, that we were done. Because Don Thousand was the guy responsible for everything. He messed with all the Baryans' lives, he led to all this darkness, he wanted destruction, he was the big bad generic baddie, and our heroes took him down. Here's the problem though. Once the duel is over, what do we do next? Yes, he was responsible, but it doesn't matter anymore because guess what? The worlds are still on a collision course with each other, and even if they weren't, the astral world is still dedicated to destroying the Baryan world and vice versa. So, what do you do? Well, Ryoga thinks the only logical conclusion is destroy the astral world. Astral believes the only logical conclusion is destroy the Baryan world. So what is left but Yuma, a 13 year old kid who now has to figure out what do I do to stop my two best friends from destroying each other and committing genocide. This is a fantastic setup, high concept, fantastic for a duel. I can't stop saying fantastic about this one. Uh, and then the duel begins, and of course, naturally, Yuma and Astral need to work together to get through it. But the way Astral talks to Yuma during the duel, it's almost like he's sort of using this to push him to his side. Like, come on, come on, we gotta beat him. Let's do it. Let's, let's work together, man. Let's do this. 
The turns are fantastic. I love the way every monster is summoned. I love the epicness to it. I love the meaning behind almost every card used in the duel. What putting out all seven over 100 numbers means for Ryoga. What obtaining uh, Utopia Beyond means for Yuma and Astral. Like, everything has meaning. Everything has reason. Uh, getting to see Ryoga's other ace monsters go up for a while is really awesome, too. And it all culminates in what is maybe the franchise's greatest moment. Not the big victory, not this epic acting moment, not Akiza's titties. It is Yuma saying no. It is him deciding, I will not kill him. I will not do that thing. I will not do what everyone has been doing and I won't give in. I won't give in to hatred or anger or fear or violence. We will find a better way. Even if it's hard, even if it's not guaranteed, Someone at some point has to put their foot down and say, no, we have to be better than this. It's something that I kind of feel like we all kind of got to relearn. And the fact that this show did it in a franchise that so often than not does fall into just the trap of big, cool, epic hero just decided to have this really morally gray complex scene and the way it ultimately plays out that because Yuma was above the violence it does work out and there are is a solution that when you try to be better it is the right thing to do and that is a really beautiful special message and I just love it and that's really what I love about this franchise because yes every duel is a toy commercial everything is trying to get you to buy product but the writers don't treat it like that when Yu-Gi-Oh is at its best duels are used as a way to convey complex morals uh, good animation and just a lot of fun and it was a lot of fun to revisit these duels even though a lot didn't get to make it that I wish did uh, but in the comment section below tell me below what your favorite duels are what you thought of the list uh, and as always click to like click to subscribe and join me for more Yu-Gi-Oh awesomeness to come